In today's quickie, we're reviewing the 2025 Volvo EX90 Dual Motor Performance Ultra. This three row electric family SUV starts at over $80,000. Underneath the hood of the Volvo EX90 is a small trunk, extraordinarily small for the size of this vehicle. This is built in Charleston, South Carolina, alongside the Polestar 3. This vehicle has 300 and 10 miles of range on the base. I don't think I closed that all the way. Now it's closed. I've had that issue on a Polestar 2 before where the hood doesn't always like to close on one side. They're both owned by Geely, a Chinese automaker. All right, so the looks up front, we don't have a traditional Volvo grille. We have the traditional Volvo logo. We have cameras everywhere, LiDAR up top. It says Volvo for life underneath that lidar sensor the newest iteration of the thor's hammer daytime running lights and since i don't have a real key i can't keep the lights on for my walk around we have active shutters down below and that contributes to the nice 300 plus miles of range here well that's what volvo estimates we'll try to figure that out on my long-term review on my main channel kirk rifles looking at the side here we have these big 22 inch wheels but notice there's no lug nuts here on this 22 inch wheel i think that's pretty neat very aerodynamic this wheelbase is 117 inches plus uh, and that allows them to fit that 111 kilowatt hour battery underneath only 107 uh, kilowatts are usable as we come to the back we have a fully glass roof as you can see of course they have that light bar treatment the lobster claws this is a Volvo trait, but it's also very Polestar, Polestar 2, Polestar 3 sort of identity back here. Glossy bottom, real fat rear wheels here with this twin motor. We had 265s up front. These are 295s in the rear. The lift gate, you can do the kick action, uh, but underneath the floor storage, we do have a NAX adapter. So what I want to show you, since this is not a NAX standard, it's a CCS standard, you can plug this in and go to a supercharging station to charge up to 250 kilowatts it's kind of nice to be honest to have that sort of flexibility you could go to electrify america or a tesla supercharger you have your choice quite cool you can do 10 to 80 percent in about 30 minutes with that sort of peak charge rate of 250 kilowatts standard level one ac charger underneath I have air ride suspension and these are actually touch capacitive back here i can fold down the rear seats sort of there it goes uh, and again without a rear button you just kind of have to press hard and hope that it registered nice flat floor here uh, let's go ahead and fold them back up it's nice to have a dual function here you could outfit this with a tonneau cover if you so choose i like this easter egg right here with all the dimensions and the things you could fit in the xc 90s electric brother the ex90 this uh, key card since i don't have the actual key this is kind of like a valet key i don't know if it works better if it's not in the thing there it goes you guys will tell me like there it goes it likes to be on the left hand side i've been trying to figure this out it doesn't always work if the door handles are open it's a dead giveaway to passer buyers that the vehicle is unlocked but I'm getting the hang of it. It's definitely a learning curve, which is completely unnecessary and definitely not luxurious, but I'm sure most of you guys have the real key fob. All right, let's get into the back seat. The doors feel nice and heavy. No sunshade here. That's weird. Soft materials up here. Bowers and Wilkins, the Bose sound system, I believe is the base sound system. The Bowers and Wilkins speaker covers look great. I love this white wood with this uh, beige interior. I took my kids to Tractor Supply earlier today, and I guarantee you it was the first EX90 at that Tractor Supply. All right, you can fold the seat flat with this button. That's neat. Uh, but you can also fold it forward. This is what you'd wanna do to put kids in the back or adults. God forbid you have to sit back here as an adult because well ouch i just nailed my elbow right here there's just no room and you can see this is i feel like ace ventura in the rhino it's getting a little hot right at least the vents here and a cup holder and a light if you are you know stuck back here for any uh period of time uh, and i also have usb c's in the back um, to charge your devices just two seats back here but it's too hot and i'm claustrophobic so let's get out all right let's sit back here 
oh man it's hot at least i have a vent right here and i have vents down here that don't do a whole lot to be honest there we go they were closed that's why they weren't doing anything touch capacitive panel back here kind of par for course with this vehicle two usb c's at the bottom mat pockets on each side these seats are quite nice and i do like this seat is this this is like the cool volvo uh, built-in booster seat which with kids i really really like so I wish all the seats had a built-in booster, but I'm a, I'm a weirdo and have a lot of young kids. Uh, that was neat. We can do this. If you fold down hard enough, it opens. That's really neat. That's the coolest thing I found about, about this vehicle, but now I can't, I can't get to close. Huge panel roof. There's no way to close it. It feels about 9 million degrees here in the Florida sun. Thigh extension here. I can't believe there's no perforated seat here. The headrest is perforated, funny enough. Um, again, real nice door panel here, albeit a little bit minimum. I have a touch capacitive panel for the rear window control. That is not good enough in my, it's okay in an EX30. And actually it's not even okay in an EX30. You just accept it because it's a cheaper vehicle. All right, head up display is quite nice. We have this real small screen, which doesn't give me any efficiency. In fact, now that I'm in here, the AC is running, which tricks me into thinking the car is on, but it is not. I have to put the key in here, which might also act as a wireless charger, but you won't be able to use it as a wireless charger, I don't think, if, uh, yeah, because your key is going to be there, at least in this instance, to start the vehicle. All right, so if I put it into reverse, you see a nice 360 camera. It's telling me to go ahead and buckle up touch capacitive buttons on the steering wheel very ex30 like um and i guess this is volume here this is next station um this is radar cruise control resume set steering assist and then this button changes uh my my view here on this small screen it tells me my charge my range but i like to be nerdy especially in an ev and let's go and put it back into park here. I want to see like miles per kilowatt hour, things like that. But as I look for efficiency here, I mean, I guess I could go to here as well. Quick controls. Yes, I can't even adjust my mirrors without using the touch capacitive steering wheel here. Uh, the lights. Um, as you can see, it took a long time to turn them on and off. Now that I have the parking lights on, let's see if I can go ahead and show you them. Oh, they're barely on. They're very, very faint, very faint daytime running lights. Uh, they seem to be getting brighter the longer I stay out here. Let's go and turn on the turn indicator too. So you get an idea that turn indicator also oh, it didn't even turn on. Uh, I guess it's not going to turn on cause I'm not in drive, but let's go and check out the rear lights. Not so much of a light bar. Um, you get a mini lobster claw that's heavy on the bottom claw and then this the d pillar lights very similar to an xc90 okay let's get back in it's a scorcher out here plenty of sweat going on it says 93 percent it's 91 degrees fahrenheit out here let's go and buckle up i can turn the performance all-wheel drive but i'll save that for my zero to 60 on my long review Oh, some safety settings here as I hear some thunder. Maybe that's a sign I need to get going. All right, uh, we're gonna put it in. Well, it did have performance earlier, but it's not giving me performance here on like the quick menu. Uh, it still is giving me the one pedal. Oh gosh, again, control everything through the touch screen, go to driving, and then we're gonna go to performance all wheel drive. Uh, okay, there's a FedEx vehicle behind me now. And so let's just uh, do one performance all wheel drive. Jeez Louise. This review has been uh, very frustrating. I haven't had the camera die on me multiple times because it's just so hot. Um, I've had traffic issues. Uh, yeah, it's just been a mess. And then just uh, fighting with the car all the time because there's a lack of physical buttons. It's been a frustrating experience to say the least. And this key card my goodness it's also frustrating i wish i had a real key instead of swiping the door handles all the time um, also this will blink at me and tell me like if i'm messing with the screen too long with the climate control or going through the car settings for example it'll just um it'll let me know that i'm not paying attention to the road uh, and it, it'll let me know kind of like the volvo ex30 does 
um, except this one's not nearly as frustrating or as nannying of a system, but it's still annoying. All right, and uh, yeah, the performance went away uh, while I was at a stop. So, I mean, maybe it comes up when you start driving. It's just been a very frustrating experience. My back's all sweaty here because I don't have ventilated seats. I probably sound like a baby, but you know what? Uh, as I get through those, some rough road, I will say the Volvo EX90 does have good ride quality for the size and heft of this vehicle. Um, and it is smooth. It is super quiet. The one pedal driving is really good as we're gonna have to uh, turn around here. The one pedal driving is good. The steering is laughably light, so I had to stiffen that up through the settings, which of course it was buried through the settings just to get to the steering feel. Um, and it's under here, and then you have to go to firm. At least it saves it, um, I believe, uh, when you turn the vehicle off. So we're just gonna, you know, go ahead and uh, get out of here. Go ahead and press home, I guess. There's no Android Auto, but pedal down. Uh, even with crummy road conditions, it's just crazy fast. No vehicle needs to be this fast as a three row family hauler, but it's good that you have it, I guess. If you want it, you're spending a lot of money. You should be able to go fast if you want to. Uh, yeah, and the size of this screen is cool, but a, you know, it's gonna be a subscription before you know it because it runs Google built-in. Now you do have Apple CarPlay option here, um, which is right here, but a good old Volvo locks you out of Android Auto because they want you to subscribe to the Google built-in services. Uh, but I will say the one pedal driving is quite good, uh, like most Volvos and plug-in hybrids. You will need the brakes to assist uh, the one pedal driving under heavy braking situations, which is pretty normal par for course. But I'm gonna shut it down there. Thank you guys for watching this quickie on the EX90. Uh, there's a lot of growing pains. There's a huge learning curve with this vehicle. And so as I have just got it in today, it's been a bit frustrating. Will I feel this frustrated after being with it for a week and a review it with the family? Well, stay tuned for my full review because I'll tell you what it's been like to live with for a week. Thank you for watching this quickie and I'll catch you in the next one.